Evolutionary Medicine, Wikipedia Audio Evolutionary medicine or Darwinian medicine is the application of modern evolutionary theory to understanding health and disease. Modern medical research and practice have focused on the molecular and physiological mechanisms underlying health and disease, while evolutionary medicine focuses on the question of why evolution has shaped these mechanisms in ways that may leave us susceptible to disease. The evolutionary approach has driven important advances in our understanding of cancer, autoimmune disease, and anatomy. Medical schools have been slower to integrate evolutionary approaches because of limitations on what can be added to existing medical curricula. Adaptation works within constraints, makes compromises and trade-offs, and occurs in the context of different forms of competition. Adaptations can only occur if they are evolvable. Some adaptations which would prevent ill health are therefore not possible. Human Adaptations Other constraints occur as the byproduct of adaptive innovations. One constraint upon selection is that different adaptations can conflict, which requires a compromise between them to ensure an optimal cost-benefit trade-off. DNA cannot be totally prevented from undergoing somatic replication corruption, this has meant that cancer, which is caused by somatic mutations, has not been completely eliminated by natural selection, humans cannot biosynthesize vitamin C, and so risk scurvy, vitamin C deficiency disease, if dietary intake of the vitamin is insufficient. Retinal neurons and their axon output have evolved to be inside the layer of retinal pigment cells. This creates a constraint on the evolution of the visual system such that the optic nerve is forced to exit the retina through a point called the optic disc. This, in turn, creates a blind spot. More importantly, it makes vision vulnerable to increased pressure within the eye since this cups and damages the optic nerve at this point, resulting in impaired vision. Different forms of competition exist and these can shape the processes of genetic change. Humans evolved to live as simple hunter-gatherers in small tribal bands, a very different way of life and environment compared to that faced by contemporary humans. This change makes present humans vulnerable to a number of health problems, termed diseases of civilization and diseases of affluence. Humans evolved to live off of the land, and take advantage of the resources that were readily available to them. They evolved for the Stone Age, and the environments of today bring about many disease-causing ailments, that may or may not be deadly. Modern environments may cause many diseases such as deficiency syndromes like scurvy and rickets. In contrast to the diet of early hunter-gatherers, the modern Western diet often contains high quantities of fat, salt, and simple carbohydrates, which include refined sugars and flours. These create health problems. Examples of aging-associated diseases are atherosclerosis and cardiovascular disease, cancer, arthritis, cataracts, osteoporosis, type 2 diabetes, hypertension, and Alzheimer's disease. The incidence of all of these diseases increases rapidly with aging. Of the roughly 150,000 people who die each day across the globe, about two-thirds 100,000 per day die of age-related causes. In industrialized nations, the proportion is much higher, reaching 90%. Running efficiency in women, and birth canal size, encephalization, and gut size, skin pigmentation protection from UV, and the skin synthesis of vitamin D speech and its use of a descended larynx, and increased risk of choking.
Many contemporary humans engage in little physical exercise compared to the physically active lifestyles ancestral hunter-gatherers. It has been proposed that since prolonged periods of inactivity would have only occurred in early humans following illness or injury that it provides a cue for the body to engage in life-preserving metabolic and stress-related responses such as inflammation that are now the cause of many chronic diseases. Contemporary humans, due to medical treatment, frequent washing of clothing and the body, and improved sanitation, are mostly free of parasites, particularly intestinal ones. This causes problems in the proper development of the immune system although hygiene can be very important when it comes to maintaining good health. The hygiene hypothesis says that many modern humans are not exposed to microorganisms that have evolved in establishing the immune system as they should be. Microorganisms and macroorganisms such as helminths from mud, animals, and feces play a critical role in driving immunoregulation. They play a crucial role in building and training immune functions to fight off and repel some diseases and protect against excessive inflammation which has been implicated in several diseases. Mate choice and disease susceptibility, genomic conflict between mother and fetus that results in preeclampsia. Constraints This is a partial list, all links here go to a section describing or debating its evolutionary origin. As noted in the table below, Adaptationist hypotheses regarding the etiology of psychological disorders are often based on analogies with evolutionary perspectives on medicine and physiological dysfunctions. Evolutionary psychiatrists and psychologists suggest that some mental disorders likely have multiple causes. Summary based on information in Bus, Gollan and McBurney, Workman and Reader See several topic areas, and the associated references, below. Charles Darwin did not discuss the implications of his work for medicine, though biologists quickly appreciated the germ theory of disease and its implications for understanding the evolution of pathogens, as well as an organism's need to defend against them. Medicine, in turn, ignored evolution, and instead focused upon proximate mechanical causes. Medicine has modeled itself after a mechanical physics, deriving from Galileo, Newton, and Descartes. As a result of assuming this model, medicine is mechanistic, materialistic, reductionistic, linear-causal, and deterministic in its concepts. It seeks explanations for diseases, or their symptoms, signs, and cause in single, materialistic i.e., anatomical or structural changes within the body, wrought directly, for example, by infectious, toxic, or traumatic agents. P510 Trade-offs and conflicts Competition effects George C. Williams was the first to apply evolutionary theory to health in the context of senescence. Also in the 1950s, John Bowlby approached the problem of disturbed child development from an evolutionary perspective upon attachment. Trans fat health risks, dental caries, high GI foods, modern diet based on common wisdom regarding diets in the Paleolithic era. Diseases of Civilization Diet Life Expectancy Exercise Cleanliness An important theoretical development was Nicolas Tinbergen's distinction made originally in ethology between evolutionary and proximate mechanisms. Randolph Amnes summarizes its relevance to medicine. All biological traits need two kinds of explanation, both proximate and evolutionary. 
The proximate explanation for a disease describes what is wrong in the bodily mechanism of individuals affected by it. An evolutionary explanation is completely different. Instead of explaining why people are different, it explains why we are all the same in ways that leave us vulnerable to disease. Why do we all have wisdom teeth, an appendix, and cells that can divide out of control? Specific Explanations The paper of Paul Ewald in 1980, Evolutionary Biology and the Treatment of Signs and Symptoms of Infectious Disease, and that of Williams and Ness in 1991, the dawn of Darwinian medicine were key developments. The latter paper draw a favorable reception, page X, and led to a book, Why We Get Sick. In 2008, an online journal started, Evolution and Medicine Review. Books Online Articles Life Stage Related other Evolutionary Psychology History